My name is Jay Sugarman, and I want to welcome you to Innovation Showcase. The main purpose of this ongoing series is to inform viewers about exciting innovations and creative individuals across the fields of business, science, technology, education, and the arts. Today via Zoom, we're fortunate to have as our guests Susan Bauer, Marcy Johnson, Molly McKeon, and Trish Corey all of whom are associated with an outstanding organization called Old Ladies Against Underwater Garbage, otherwise known as OLAG. Based on Cape Cod, this inspiring initiative was started by Susan in 2017 and involves small teams of women swimmers ages 64 to 85 who are committed to clearing up the wide range of trash found in ponds scattered from Falmouth to Chatham. During the program, we're finding out why and how this noteworthy undertaking came about and how it's grown, developed, and operates today. Let's start by meeting our guest and then learning all about Old Ladies Against Underwater Garbage. Welcome. So delighted you're all able to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. You know, first of all, just congratulations on the fantastic work you've been doing. Eager to hear more and have you inform viewers. But before we jump right to that, I think it would be of interest just to hear a little bit about each of your backgrounds, professional or other interests. And then, uh, Susan, you can share uh, the history and growth of the organization. Susan, would you start by just sharing, please, a little bit about your background? Um, I am the old one in this group. Uh, I am 84 years old, and this, in a sense, is my third career. So I started as a writer. Uh, I wrote books on the history of oceanography, and one was literally titled The Edge of an Unfamiliar World. I then traded that in to be a psychologist. So I was in another dark and unfamiliar place, this sort of secrets of the deep, but the mind. And then in a, when I was about 70, I became absolutely fascinated by pond turtles. I had switched mm -hmm. from swimming in saltwater to ponds, and I met all these turtles, and that became the driving factor, is improving the ponds themselves. So that's how I came to Olog. Nice, nice. Marcy, welcome. A uh, little bit about your background, interest, and what attracted you to Olog. All right. I grew up on Cape Cod and swimming in the ponds here. Uh, went off to uh, have my life <laughs> elsewhere, <laughs> the Cape, as many often do, and uh, then re retired back here. So I retired from, uh, worked as, uh, for 20 years for a private school north of Boston in the Alumni and Development Department. And uh, so here I am, but was lucky enough to find this group at the time when I really needed to. So be enjoying it very much so right. in my retirement. Wonderful, wonderful. Molly, please, a little bit about yourself and interest in the group. Um, okay, I um, am a mother of three daughters. Um, I also am um, a CPA, uh, and I retired about five years ago um, when my first grandchild uh, was born. Um, and um, I've been living here on the Cape for about 12 years, uh, kind of a pre-retirement uh, move. Um, and I have always loved the water. And, um, you know, it was always my happy place, even, you know, from five years old. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I have a pretty strong um, competitive swimming background. Um, and um, I found Olog um, uh, about two years ago. And um, here we are. And I love it. Um, and I love adventure. So. Terrific. Terrific. Sounds like a wonderful match. Mm -hmm. Trish, welcome. Please share a little bit about yourself and attraction to the group. So um, I've lived on the Cape for 40 years. I have four children and a husband. Uh, all of us have, uh, are here on the Cape. Mm -hmm. I'm a, a swimmer. I have been my whole life. And I love to kayak and stand up paddleboard. And 
I'm athletic, you know, I look for different things uh, in which I can pursue different types of sports. And um, I've also been an environmentalist all my life. So when a friend of mine introduced me to Olaga, a woman uh, I, I uh, coach Special Olympics with, and uh, she introduced me to Olog and she said, you'll love it. You know, it's a group of these amazing women. And the fact that they're doing all the things that you love, you know, it seems like a really good fit. Uh, so this year I tried out my first year with the group and uh, it's everything that she said, you know, these, these are strong, smart, successful women. And, you know, we've all sort of found each other with this common interest to do something good. We love Cape Cod uh, and we have a real strong interest in making sure that we take care of this place and, and that we have this legacy of stewardship. Mm -hmm. Well put, well put. And I know another thing that strikes me is just how much fun all of you are having doing it as well. Just the spirit, the enthusiasm uh, makes it such appealing to find out about. With, with that in mind, Susan, would you please step back a little and share how it first came about, how you sort of got your interest and idea off the ground and what it's led to today, please? I started swimming in ponds um, 20 years ago when I moved to Chatham and people die if they'd swim in the salt water in Chatham because not of the sharks in those days, but the incredible currents that flow through. And it's not a lot of fun to swim in the exact same place as you, as the current tries to take you someplace else. So I sw started swimming in ponds and I disliked it intensely because I don't like mud, the consistency of yogurt squishing between my toes. And I'm terrified of snapping turtles, absolutely terrified. And I saw the 50 pounders, the 60 pounders, uh, because in those days they were the kings of the ponds and they ruled and were everywhere. And of course, the legends about them were fantastic. Uh, they bite like a pair of lock joint pliers that never let go. You can even kill them and they still won't let go. So I was very tentative about it. However, as I kept swimming, I discovered the small turtles, the painted turtles and the musk or stink pot turtles that swim around in those ponds. And to my astonishment, they were as interested in me as I was in them. And I was not prepared for that, but I would swim down one side of the pond. And when I turned and came out to the other, they would be waiting for me, each one in their little territory as I passed by. And they would sit on my hands. If I put my hands out, they would crawl up my shoulders. Once even tried to, once, once even tried to court me and uh, thought that my shoulder in a wetsuit looked like a very enticing shell of a female turtle. And I was absolutely blown away. This changed my life. It took a while. I'm a slow learner, but it finally really got to me that I am one life among billions of other kinds of life. And that every single one of us, every turtle I saw, every slimy water plant that I saw was an individual example of life and was trying just as hard as I was to live a wonderful, long as possible life. And I walked out of the water that day that the turtle tried to make love to my shoulder into a much larger world because everything that I saw was no longer a thing I could use, but a being I could relate to. And I wanted to help them they were my buddies. We were all in this thing called life together. Mm -hmm. And so I looked at the trash in the pond in a different way after that. And I thought, well, let's just clean this up. So in 2017, I was swimming with two friends. We commandeered a guy in a kayak and said, follow us, stuck a laundry basket between his legs and came up with maybe a, a bushel of trash. Now we come up with a hundred pounds of trash per dive we thought was, was terrific and nothing much happened until the pandemic when all socializing had to be outside. And then we began to have tryouts and now we have this fantastic self-selected bunch of um, women who are 
just amazing and, and can really do anything. We have a saying, uh, maybe one woman can't take a muddy tire off the bottom of a, of a pond, but three women can do anything. <laughs> That's terrific. That's terrific. Susan, can you please share how this interesting expedition came about, the one uh, with the now famous toilet? Uh, teen toilet. Um, <clears throat> we scout every pond that we uh, clean up to make sure that it's uh, got good water quality and, and not so much weed that we can't see anything. And so when we scouted John's pond, we found a toilet. And we had been courting the Boston Globe saying, won't you come down and do a photo essay of us? And they were not sure until we found the toilet. Then they were sure. So the day of the dive was stormy, rainy, windy, poor water quality, poor visibility. But we swam out and there was probably a dozen or 15 of us and we could not find it. And it was a disaster. I did not realize that I could weep into a mask and snorkel, but... It was, I was so embarrassed. And then as we left, I gave the signal, retreat, everybody back to the beach. And then the same woman who found it the first time found it again. And we hoisted it up on a kayak. We towed it sort of to shore to where, where we could stand up. Then we lifted that sucker up and out came an eel who had been living in the throat of the toilet. And then we got it. Uh, back and you can see there wasn't a whole lot of other garbage that we found that day. It was, but it was a, a person's wallet and a plunge all away from a toilet. Fantastic, fantastic. Marcy, could you share a little bit about your role as a swimmer? Uh, sure. Um, the swimmers go out in usually pairs of two or three, each one with a kayak. And, uh, we are assigned, Susan will assign a route that we're going to follow. The better longer distance swimmers she'll send out as far as a mile, half a mile. And the slower swimmers like me will only go out more like a quarter of a mile to a half a mile. Uh, we'll swim out, um, and as unfortunately, we're losing the sound side of the kayak. The kayak is our safety nest the whole time uh, as we're looking at the bottom. Uh, so we are uh, snorkeling, so we're face down in the water looking at the bottom, and we're looking for something that looks man-made, something that is like perfectly round or perfectly square or a long, straight something. Uh, sometimes they're shiny and white like golf balls, uh, but uh, you're looking for something that looks out of place in the natural world. And as soon as you see that, uh, you you dive down and the kayaker will notice that your feet are up in the air as you go down. So she's aware that you're coming up, hopefully, with, with your prize. Um, and sometimes while you're down there, you see two or three other things when you get close enough to the bottom. Uh, but uh, it's always a treasure hunt. It's always fun. Nice, nice. Uh, Trish, can you pick up and share the role of the kayaker in the mission? Sure. Uh, so the kayakers, as Marcy and Susan were saying, we go out uh, according to a plan that we all set up on the beach. Uh, initially, Susan has a map of the pond and will direct different teams or pods of a kayaker with two or three divers. And we'll send them out in different directions and different distances. Um, and so we'll have a kayaker when I kayak, I do both kayak and diving. When I kayak, um, I'll typically have two or three people with me and we'll head out and they start diving uh, anywhere from zero to 10 feet out. We don't go much beyond that, that um, depth. Uh, and as we start to move out, you know, our primary goal, of course, is to not hit the divers. You know, we're coming very close to them to pick up mm. garbage. 
Uh, they, as, as Marcy mentioned, as soon as we see their feet go up in the air, we know that they are going down for some garbage. We don't know how big, we don't know what they're seeing. So we start to move in that direction to be there as soon as they come back up to get that garbage from them. So they're not holding it up in the air. You know, Their signal to us is to hold up that garbage and then we come over and collect it. So before we head out, we set up our kayak. Uh, I cover myself with a plastic tarp because a lot of what we pull up is full of slime and gunk and rust and water. Uh, so sometimes they're sharp things, pieces of glass, fishing lures. Uh, so we protect ourselves. Uh, then we put a basket between our legs and we all wear gloves. The divers wear gloves, the kayakers wear gloves. So that when we go up to pick up the garbage from them, we're putting it in a basket and we're collecting everything there. Sometimes as you see in these photos, the items are so big, they don't fit in a basket. Mm -hmm. I've gone where we, I've had two cinder blocks on the front of the kayak or a tire. Uh, but when we get those things, we're not going back to shore. You know, we continue to go with the divers. Our primary responsibility is for their safety to make sure we are their eyes and ears when we're out there. So you're constantly swiveling your head between all three divers. You corral them together to make sure that one isn't kind of going off the path of where you want to go mm -hmm. uh, in what <laughs> section of the pond that you're supposed to clean. Uh, so we communicate very carefully. They can't talk and they can't see very well with that mask and snorkel. So I'm their eyes and ears. You know, I make sure they're safe, that they're not going into obstacles. Uh, and then we give signals to each other. Sometimes our teams are half a mile apart. So we signal with each uh, to each other with whistles uh, and we have different signals we use for safety. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, what a coordinated operation. Yes. Um, Molly, can you share how the community is involved in this organization? Um, well, we actually work um, in partnership with a lot of the pond associations and also uh, the town of conservation departments. Um, and um, our uh, home, um, our uh, pond associations, um, they have been terrific. They, a lot of times they will supply the kayakers um, and they will take all of our garbage and dispose of it for us. Um, and then they'll spread the word to other uh, associations. Um, so it's, 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 it's actually a, a fun community to, to work with. Fantastic. And I hear that uh, all of you work for rather cheap. What's involved in your payment? <laughs> Cookies. Okay. <laughs> We're cheap That's, dates. Mm -hmm. Very <laughs> good. Very good. You know, Jay, that looking, started when. Go ahead. The, the tradition of cookies started many years ago because, uh, like Molly, I was primarily a runner. I ran for 45 years and still miss it, just loved running. And mm -hmm. at some point, I awarded myself cookies on the basis of how long and how well I ran and how much I enjoyed it. So a good run could get me as many three as many as three cookies <laughs> and a, a, a poor <laughs> one got me nothing, a glass of water. <clears throat> and I transferred that over to swimming when I started swimming in ponds. And if I'd see two turtles, I got two cookies or a big snapping turtle, I got a big cookie. And so that transferred just quite naturally when people, when the pond associations would say, how much do you charge for this service? Uh, we would say nothing, but you have to give us hot drinks and you have to give us cookies. Terrific, and terrific. It's become a thing. And so now pond associations try to outdo themselves in how ornate and how wonderful the cookie can be, or if the cookie can be in the shape of their pond. <laughs> oh, fabulous, fabulous. You know, want to hear just a quick word of one outgrowth of all the diving and collecting of garbage and other items was an exhibition uh, at the Falmouth Arts Center. Just a quick word about this, Susan. Um, 
Diane Hammer takes such beautiful pictures and the pictures of just the garbage itself looked so much like an abstract painting that we went to the Falmouth Art Center and we said, you know, we will bring in a crowd that doesn't usually come to art centers. And so they said, sure. And we put up a bunch of Diane's beautiful photographs, as you can see. And then we got one of my wetsuits and stuffed it with uh, bubble wrap and hung myself upside down uh, over a big thing of garbage. But you will see toward the left hand of that picture, Diane Hammer in blue with her hands on an aquarium. That didn't work so well. So we filled it with water and we put in golf balls and fish lures, a couple of beer cans, you know, a, a rum bottle, the usual. And all went well until it began to smell. And it really began to smell like a terrible pond. And so they asked us if we would please remove it. And we said, oh, no, we don't have to remove it. We'll just add vinegar, at which point it smelled like a pickle pond. <laughs> but we tried. And then finally, we covered it over with saran wrap and uh, where it was able to leave our pickled garbage where it was. There's the uh, tank itself. Susan, just uh, <laughs> building on that, yeah. what, are, what are some of the uh, current goals and plans for the organization? We have, our organization has really been shifting. It has gone from a small band of friends who got together uh, infrequently and informally to get uh, a lot of the trash out of the ponds to a real powerhouse. We have uh, a, a national platform. People are listening uh, to what we say. I learned this morning that the uh, town of Falmouth has a, a select person board and that they stopped in the middle of their last meeting and said, we want of underwater garbage because they are the champions of Falmouth. And I was very moved by that. And so our outreach has got to be much further. It's There are a lot of ponds on Cape Cod, but we're not going to simply bounce around and clean. We, we cleaned 14 this year and scouted 20 more. And people wanted more. They said, there's not enough ponds for the swimmers. Get more, which is difficult because it takes a lot of organization. So we are not going to have tryouts. We're not going to expand in that way. But what we are going to try to do is to put what we have learned, and we have learned a tremendous amount in the last five years or so, uh, into a video, into a manual. And we uh -huh. have requests from all over the country, Texas, Tennessee, Illinois, Connecticut. Uh, let's see if we can. We've trademarked our names. So you can't just be an old lady against underwater garbage. But can we uh, spur a bunch of these? Because if you think of it, Jay, there are many, not just dozens, there are hundreds of environmental groups across the country who go out and have fun and have sacrifice, make sacrifices and do something good. They plant trees, they collect garbage, they get litter, uh, they encourage, make trails, encourage people to get outside. But there's only one group, and that's our group, that is really based on joy. It is based on the, the real adventure. You don't have an adventure when you go to the food store. You don't have an adventure even when you try and drive around Boston. An adventure is entering a world that is completely foreign to you. And ponds are the last scrap, the last remnant of understanding disturbed natural beauty. It is true wilderness. And we go in there and ability to be so focused on the present moment, so focused on that beer can or those three beer cans. That was my best. I got three in one dive. <laughs> that you are not thinking of yourself. And when you leave as the famous psychologist William J. Self, then you see the world. And we are quietly radical in that we believe that you can scale up joy a lot faster than you can scale up sacrifice. And we want to spread 
this terrific way of uh, really improving the relationship between human beings and the natural world. Wonderful. Well, you've definitely made that impact and have gone a long way. And the future, I know, is uh, very bright. Uh, in the few minutes remaining, Molly, what's been some of the reaction and feedback you've heard about the group's efforts? Um, well, first of all, all of my daughters are just, um, you know, pretty ecstatic about what we do. <laughs> Um, they just think it's awesome. All their friends think it's awesome. <laughs> um, so and, um, you know, my mother-in-law cannot wait to hear uh, of my adventures after each dive. So it's been overwhelmingly terrific feedback. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Trish, same question to you, reaction and feedback you've gotten observed from ER participation. I love that question, Jay, because I think, you know, I'm new to the group, so I come at it a bit with fresh eyes. And one of the things that I loved as we started out, you know, we call ourselves self-described old ladies against underwater garbage. And but the thing that we hear over and over again from people that the associations, the people who come to watch what we're doing is I can't believe you guys do this. This is a physical effort. You know, the women in this group are strong. Uh, this takes a lot of skill and endurance, whether you're kayaking or swimming. So I love that people have to rethink what old means. Mm. I love that they have to just say, you know, wow, this is amazing what you do. And so as we reach a certain age, we bring a lot of value to the table. And that's good for people to see. That's good for our kids to see, as Molly said. And for people around us to, for us to be able to inspire other women to do this, that's a good thing, no matter how old they are. Yeah, that's, no, that's an important part of this for all of us. Oh, for sure. You're incredible role models for all of us. In closing, Marcy, a few words from you about observations of reactions over the years that you've been involved. Uh, well, it's fun to watch people uh, when we go into the water thinking, oh, this is a really clean pond. You're not going to find anything. And they're kind of a little bit skeptic, but they hang around. And then when we come back with kayaks full of stuff that we found on the bottom of the pond, it changes to Oh my God, I never <laughs> missed to see that. And that then you they recognize that, yes, we are doing something. And just because you can't see it doesn't mean it isn't there. Um, that to me is something that everybody needs to think about when they're uh, in their daily life. Uh, when you have something in your car, don't toss it out the window because you can't see it anymore. Doesn't mean it's not on someone else's lawn. Um, a lot of the things that we find got there by accident. So no one meant to throw the beer can. Well, we like to think no one meant meant to throw the beer can away. Uh, maybe it got smoking? blown off a boat. <laughs> well, but uh, you. that's yeah, a there good are a lot of things that people didn't mean to end up in the pond that do. For sure. A wonderful reminder for all of us to end with. But unfortunately, we've come to the end of the time. I want to thank all of you so much for being here and wish you well with future dives and endeavors. Very inspiring work for us all. Thank you for doing it and for sharing it with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I also fun. want to thank those thank of you for tuning in. And especially, in. Jay, thank you. For sure. And hope everybody watching can tune in next time. Mm -hmm.